Welcome back to the sculpture guys. This is the third installment of the standing sculpture and I have let it dry a little bit overnight. So this time what I want to do is start focusing on different parts and I think what I want is as I decrease or I'll go down in the sculpture it's going to get a little bit more rough or abstract. I kind of like that idea of having a focus point and then trailing it off but I also need some sort of support. Right now, I have not removed the middle part, but I wanted to keep you guys informed on the process of this. There's not a lot of in-depth stuff on water clay online, so I wanted to show you what I'll do. This, it's pretty thin. The body itself is kind of thin when you look at the inside, but I think I'll probably scoop a little bit on the inside and vent it somewhere on the back. One of the things that people have asked me is, if I use these sticks and if I leave it in the arm like this, there's a couple of reasons that it's a bad idea to leave the stick in here and then you pull it out and then you can create an air bubble. That's a little bit of a issue because if you create an air bubble inside the clay, potentially it could break in the firing process. So what you want to do is pull out the stick when this is still wet because then you can push it and remove those air bubbles like the holes the pockets inside that the the stick leaves another alternative is you can keep the stick in there and then when it dries up when it gets harder you simply pull it out and leave the hole in there but you gotta make sure that the structure is right and the proportions are right. You don't wanna then modify it. But if you do remove the stick when this is a little bit on the harder side, it'll create a hole. What you should do is leave the hole open. And in the past, I've done that for the Hulk sculpture, the Metroid sculpture, and I've just left the hole there in the surface because it's very easy to fix it after it's been fired and it creates a lot of the, the venting that you need on a water sculpture like this. So if I, for example, hollowed out this torso, you know, I took the back and I just dug a little bit inside, just by poking this and leaving a hole, say, in the deltoid, it would be able to vent through there. So that way you can, you don't even have to scoop it out in the conventional way because this is a little bit more intricate doing a standing figure like this you do require a little bit more balance and you don't want to say hollow out too much of the hips or the legs because the legs they require a lot more structure support for the top so you can't make this very thin because otherwise it will crumble so you want this to be a little bit on the thicker side I still don't know what I'm going to be doing here but I should be doing that probably either today or tomorrow. And my focus today is going to be just doing some details in the torso and really try to liven up the sculpture. Right now, it's got the flow that I want. Another thing I'll, I'll note is that this pipe, we are going to have to remove it at some point. And once we do, we're going to have to re-sculpt this section. It's not that big of a deal, but also that's another thing. It's kind of like the stick thing. You don't want to leave it there for too long because the clay, because it's got water, it wants to, as it dries, it wants to shrink and like really hold on to things. And what tends to happen with this, if you leave it drying too much, it could bust and break your sculpture. Now, you know, there's a lot of engineering that goes in these water-based sculptures, but Nothing beats really the water-based sculpture for doing quick virtuoso type of sculptures. I really like it and I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how you can hollow it out but you can watch some of my older videos on hollowing out sculptures. I'm probably not going to do a lot of that here but I will just hollow out the torso and leave the rest kind of open. But so far let's get started with this. I looking forward to finishing this thing up. At this point, I want to start putting in some of the details. I'm going to start in the head. Generally, I find an area I want to concentrate on and that gives me a little bit more direction to build the body. 
this particular model is very distinctive and what I'm using the brush for is to smooth out the muscles and I combine it with the metal tools for doing details. When you have a head this small and statue this small, you can't really rely on very large things to sculpt. So often I'll go back and forth with these tools, the silicone tool, the dental tools and the brushes. The deltoid has quite a few uh, small lines and those are really the strands of the deltoid and when you have a model with very low body fat you should be able to see the direction of the muscles and where it attaches you can even see the direction of the the humerus the way he's twisting that arm the part where the deltoid actually goes with the humerus is the tuberosity the deltoid tuberosity and I tend to get my brush wet. I have a little cup where I have water. I rub it and then I can smooth out some of the, the strands of the muscles. So I'll take that brush and kind of just blend it together. I don't do it uniformly. I try to vary it up. When you do drawing, you want to vary the line because that gives you the variety of line. It's the same thing with sculpture. You want to vary up your your lines in your tool and you don't want it to be robotic like a 3d printer would create it he's got a very pronounced zygomatic arch so i want to emphasize that a little bit and there i go with the brush again and you can see it blends the muscle groups together this big brush works really well if you just want to put a very smooth tone on the muscle and this right side of the abdominals, I need to make it a little bit deeper. It's a little bit too flat in the front. And a lot of it, it has to do with the reference that I have. The reference that I have is a little bit flatter on the left side or his right side because the light is coming from one direction. So you have to almost work with the symmetry that you have from the left side. This cloth, I think that's the way I'm going to do the legs. The legs are going to be a little bit more abstract. I don't want to put too much detail on it. But I also need something else. I'm still searching for ideas for the base. I was thinking about putting some sort of drapery. But in a way, this type of body reminds me of a trapeze artist. So I'm thinking of potential things that I could put in there. because. This body is not like a gym sort of body. He's just in very good shape. You know, like you often see male models that have a gym physique, and I don't think it's like a very attractive physique. You know, the CrossFit sort of body. That's something that's not very pleasing to look at. So these trapeze artists, like I remember back in the day when I used a model, I used a guy that was pretty old and he was a former trapeze artist and he had a extremely good figure for artists and this model reminds me of that so I just want to put some details here in the feet the feet were a little bit too big because I made it that big because I needed it to stand and carry that weight but now that it's a little bit firmer I should be able to remove and make it a little bit thinner. At this point, you can't really move the legs back and forth and create movement, especially with water-based clay without an armature. So if you wanted to create a little bit more movement, you would have to add and then subtract. So if I wanted to take a foot back, I would simply have to cut the top part and add to the rear. Now I want to sculpt a little bit of the hand. The hands I'm probably going to have to take a whole lot of time because they are very intricate. Normally it's difficult to sculpt hands, but these hands, they're kind of like holding each other. He is putting the hands together, so that makes it very complex. And you really have to study it pretty hard to get this done. I'm coming to the end of this third video for the sculpture i hope you guys enjoyed this video 
Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and I'll post the next update in the future, probably next week. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.